So welcome everybody to this virtual community meeting uh, regarding the upcoming Polytechnic Heights Street Improvement Project. My name is Greg Robbins and I'm a project manager with the City of Fort Worth Transportation and Public Works Department, specifically in our Neighborhood Streets Division. Uh, on the call with us this, uh, this evening are all uh, our representatives from the Fort Worth Water Department, the engineering consultant that's doing the design and others from TPW. So they'll be around at the end uh, to help answer any questions that you may have. This presentation is meant to provide you with some information about the scope of this project that is happening in your area and give the community a chance to provide feedback or ask questions about the project and how you'll be impacted. So here's the agenda of what I hope to cover in my brief presentation. I'll be talking about the project as a whole, uh, providing a summary of the improvements on each street associated with this project, discussing the expected schedule moving forward, and blocking off some time at the end for your questions and input. So first we'll talk about the overall scope of the improvements associated with this project. Um, this project is is part of the proposed and upcoming 2022 bond election, which will be voted on in May of this year. So just here in a couple of weeks, the city manager and the city council have kindly provided funding to start the design of this project and several others in anticipation of the bond passing here, uh, here in a couple of weeks. Uh, funding for this construction of this and other projects are included in the bond package. So please remember to go vote and let your opinion on this be counted. So there are six streets associated with the Polytechnic Heights area that are slated for reconstruction. So they are Avenue C from Thrall Street to Wesleyan Street, Avenue E from Bishop Street to Campbell Street, Avenue G from Binkley Street to South Collard Street, Holmes Street from East Rosedale Street to Avenue G, uh, North Avenue H from the West Dead Inn to Miller Avenue, and Thrall Street from East Vickery to Avenue D. On the next couple of slides, I'll discuss the existing conditions present on these streets and give you a street by street breakdown of the proposed improvements for each one. This slide shows the existing conditions of these streets and why they were included in this bond package for reconstruction. Uh, you know, these streets were included in this project because the repairs that are needed go beyond the standard maintenance um, and require a full reconstruction. You can see from the pictures. The issues that we're going to be correcting include uh, damaged asphalt pavement, missing or broken curbs and gutters, damaged or missing sidewalk, or uh, missing uh, damaged or missing driveways, as well as replacing or, up, or upgrading the water and sewer utilities under the streets in several locations. Next, I'll go through each street individually and discuss the improvements that are expected to be made on each one. So on Avenue C, uh, we'll be replacing the existing pavement and providing new concrete curbs or adding curbs where none are existing. Uh, we will also be replacing existing driveways with new concrete drives. Uh, these new driveways will be a minimum of 11 feet wide or uh, match your existing driveway if it happens to be wider than that. Uh, Avenue C will also um, be getting new five foot wide sidewalks on both sides of the street. Uh, in addition, we will be upgrading the existing six inch water line under the street to an eight inch. On Avenue E, um, we have new paving uh, with concrete curbs, say, uh, very similar to the previous street, new concrete driveways, a minimum 11 foot width, a new five foot sidewalk on both sides of the street. In addition, we will be replacing the existing 12 inch water line under the street. On Avenue G, uh, new pavement, new concrete curves, new concrete driveways, and we'll be providing a new concrete sidewalk on both sides of the street. Um, in addition, we'll be upgrading the existing six inch water to an eight inch. On Holm Street, uh, we'll have new, new pavement with concrete curves, and we'll also be providing uh, new concrete driveways uh, on this street. Uh, also upgrading the existing six inch sewer line under the road to an eight inch. On Avenue H, uh, we have, this is a short little street. We'll be just replacing the, the, the pavement with, uh, with new concrete curbs and replacing the, the driveways along there uh, with minimum 11 foot or matching whatever is out there. 
uh, on Thrall Street. Um, we have several improvements uh, for, for paving, new concrete, uh, new new pavement with concrete curbs, um, new new driveways, uh, a new five foot concrete sidewalk on one side of the street. Um, rep replacing the existing eight inch water as well as rerouting and, and replacing an existing 30 inch storm drain uh, into the city right away between Avenue A and Vickery. So this slide in the next show something of what you can expect the finished product to look like once the construction is finished. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be providing a full depth reconstruction of the existing pavement and rebuilding existing driveways with concrete. We'll also be providing concrete sidewalks on many of the streets, uh, many of the streets, which will include new ADA accessible ramps where they're needed. So next, I'll speak a little bit on the anticipated schedule for the rest of the project. So the dates shown here are what we estimate going forward for the project milestones, and it's partially based on the voting date for bond approval. Uh, this project is currently in the design phase, and we are a little bit more than 60% of the way finished. We received and reviewed the 60% plans from the engineer, and we're planning to move to the next deliverable soon. Uh, you can see that the next item on the list is the 2022 bond vote, which I wanted to remind you about um, so that we can get funding to make the improvements that I showed earlier. After that, if all goes to plan, we plan on advertising for bids sometime in the fall of this year and receiving bids from contractors uh, for the work in around November. Uh, it takes a couple of months for the award process to complete, so we hope to get council approval by uh, the 1st of 2023 and then award the contract to the qualified contractor by March. After that, the last step is the construction itself, which will most likely be in spring of 2023, and we expect it to last for about a year. If you'd like any additional information about the 2022 bond program, you can go to this link and to find out more information about the funding, the included projects, and some other items of interest related to the bond. I'll stay on this page for just a few minutes so that anyone who wants to write it down, the, the link to the website can do so. Um, it, it, additionally, if you don't want to write down this link, I believe if you go to Google and just type in uh, City of Fort Worth 2022 bond, it's the first link that pops up. So that's another way to do it. You can go there and read more about the bond and, and, the, and the projects that are included. And with that, we basically come to the end of the presentation. So uh, we can move now into our questions and input portion. So if you have any questions, you can either, uh, if I see any in the chat, we'll take those first, and then we can get to anyone who may have questions on the phone. So. Jeff, do we have any chat questions that we can start taking? Greg, there's nothing in chat at the moment. All right, so we don't have any questions in chat. If anybody is is on a phone and would like to unmute themselves, we can take your, your questions that way now. Mr. Robinson, how are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, this is Deborah Williams, and my address is at 3424 Avenue I, and my concern was Avenue I was left out, and on one part of the street, it was updated about two years ago, but the other part of the street is ragged, have holes in it, some of them need sidewalks, and I'm just wondering why our street was passed by. Um, I'm not I'm not for sure why Avenue I uh, would have been passed over. I know that you know streets that are in the bond were included based on their condition and uh, and their need for for repairs that go beyond just you know traditional maintenance. So um, that's the reason these particular streets were included. I'm not exactly sure why I would would not have been included. You say it was recently uh, part of it was recently redone. Yeah, part of it, but. The rest of it has holes in it and you no know, sidewalks and people run up and down them and uh, the curbs are bad. I'm just wondering why we can't get an update in this bond as well. Okay, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Uh, like I said, I'm not exactly sure why it wouldn't have been included, but um, unfortunately, 
uh, it, it, you know what? I don't know if it wasn't included in the later project. Jeff, do you happen to know? Uh, I don't Mary. know anything. I don't know anything off the top of my head. Mary may know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is Mary from TDW. I'm the generic manager of our neighborhood street. Uh, the project and the bond. We actually did uh, a whole city ranking for the streets, and based on their condition, the worst of the worst was chosen. I mean, we have a limited budget. We cannot do every single street in the city. So we had to go and rank the street and top, take the top. Uh, some streets can be slighted for other projects like water and sewer replacement and We'll do some bathing. Some streets are um, done through maintenance. So it, 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 the list have been going around. We had public meeting for over a year and a half now, asking the public for input on the list. But by this point, the list is already approved and on the tablet for vote. So, yes, go ahead. No, I mean, at, it's all out of our hand now. I can give Greg the correct person you can email for customer service. And if there is holes, I mean, there is potholes in the street, they can come, the street, our crew can come and fill this, and it won't be hazard or anything until, and we can put it on a schedule for maintenance or something. I, I clearly understand. I clearly understand that, but you went to Avenue C, E, and G, and H, skipped over I, and went to Holmes, and you went to Thorough. And the issue also, some of the streets has cast iron water, so we need to replace it. So there is other things. It may not be visible in the streets, but it's an issue. So the ranking was uh, have so many things like Avenue Thrall have the school there. So that make it the street rank higher. So there is some other things the city look at when they ranking the street because we have to have this route to school. I mean, we, we, our, our group are giving the street list. Uh, there is a planning group who decide and rank all the streets in the city uh, based on the condition. And I thoroughly understand that as well. We have a daycare at the end of the corner. It's just as important as school kids. We have little kids at the daycare. So we can we can enter this data. We we don't like we don't have a daycare. We entering school uh, data in there, but we can we can tell the people who do that to start looking at the daycare data. Um, but I mean, we, um, we, we can get your information. Greg can send you the email and you can contact the customer service and they will uh, update you what can be done for that street. Uh, seriously, we, we have a very good uh, customer service. We'll respond and we'll do our best to make sure um, the street is not hazard or in very, it's not drivable or anything until we can put it in a list for another project. And I think an easy way to do that also is with the, the My Fort Worth app. Um, you can report uh, potholes and things on there, I believe. Okay. We do have two questions in chat now as well. Okay. Uh, the first one is, are the 60% plans available to the public? Is there something in particular, um, if there's something in particular that they would like to see, um, I, I can set with them or, or, or call them individually to discuss it. Um, we don't typically, um, make make uh, intermittent submittals public just because things change. Um, so we don't want you thinking that something that shows up in 60% but didn't show up in 100% plans was a mistake or was left out. Um, so if 
if anybody wants to call, contact me, so I'm going to go and sell my, my contact information up here. Uh, if you have specific questions and you want to see something in the plans uh, related to your property and the specific improvements related to your your specific lot or street, um, you can give me a call here and or, or email me and I can get with you. I can get with you that way, and we can discuss. Uh, That's great. Plans. Thanks, Greg. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg, and the other question: uh, When construction starts on the streets. Will the new sidewalk walks be marked out well in advance so we can relocate any planting that may encroach? Um, by by layout, do you mean you know like like paint on the ground or something? Because usually we the, it'll there'll be some stakes that'll be out there, and then we'll start seeing forms go up. Um, like it, they'll, they'll excavate the area and then they'll start putting forms up where the new sidewalk is going to go. Um, so if if things needed to be moved out of the way, the contractor is can be directed to not just throw things in your yard away. If they need to be salvaged to you, if it's a, a, a you know rocks for your planter, or you know you have some other sort of um, delineation uh, that needs to be moved out of the road, uh, we can definitely tell the contractor to do that um, if it needs to be if it needs to be protected or salvaged back to you, so we don't throw it away. And James, one other thing, um, one other thing to keep in mind is, is you'll probably see the stakes, but you'll also get a hang tag on your door before they are like a week ahead of time. So if you don't see stakes at that point, you can always contact Greg um, and make sure that they don't do anything you don't want them to do. So. Greg, hey, this is. Jimmy Gresham, I'm the director of facilities at Texas Wesleyan University. And uh, okay. you all hear me? I can hear you just fine. Okay, good, thank you. Now, I just wanna say we're very excited about Avenue C. It's probably gotta be one of the worst streets in the city. Uh, personally drive down it several times a week and we're very excited that's gonna be uh, repaved. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the timing is gonna be great for us too because cl our classes are out for the uh, spring semester in May, so sounds like you are starting sometime in the, you know, you said May 2023, so that would work good for us. Um, okay, and as closer to construction, we'll, we'll definitely be coordinating with you uh, to make sure that we're not, you know, having a, a negative impact on, you know, kids getting to school or something like that. Okay, yeah, and then the, on Avenue C, we have a, a parking lot there, but there's two entrances, one, one from Westland Street and one from Avenue C, so I wouldn't, shouldn't, so any problems with uh, egress to that parking lot? Um, okay, so we're excited about it. Uh, we do have a construction project, which uh, David Pritchard is uh, our design engineer. I think he asked a question earlier that may we may need to coordinate uh, with you off uh, offline. Is this the one the apartments on Avenue G? Uh, no, it's a project between uh, Rosedale and Avenue C. That we're working on, but okay, and we can just I mean, can we set up a meeting with you maybe on a later date where we can discuss the details of that? It, it, it'll just absolutely. be a little bit of coordination. I, I see. Sure, uh, absolutely. Just feel free to give me a call or or email me, and we can set that up. Okay, sounds good. No, yeah, no, we're pretty excited about this. I don't think anything going on Avenue G it would affect us too much. Just kind of south of okay, great. All the properties down there, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And did anybody have any other questions on the phones? Jeff, did anybody else put any questions in the chat? Uh, no, sir. There's nothing else in the chat. Just a uh, uh, sounds good. Thank you from James. Okay, great. All right. Well, if there's not any questions, um, we can go ahead and, and 
and go ahead and close this meeting. Um, if you do think of a question, you know, just right after this meeting, or you think of it here in a couple of days or weeks, uh, always feel free to give me a call. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer questions to help out. Um, you can call me at that number or email me and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. So thank you everyone for your attendance. Thank you for being here uh, on this Monday evening. Thank you for taking your time. Thank you for your interest in the project. And I look forward to look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Greg. Thank you, Greg. I do. Um, we do have one call in user, so the phone number is uh, for Greg is 817-392-2333 in case you need to call him since you can't see the screen. Oh, thank you, Jeff. 